From a SWAT raid in Indiana that could have gone a little smoother, and a kleptomaniac who decided to steal a police car in Texas, to a brave officer in Wisconsin who wasn't about to let these cows perish in a fire, and a hair-raising race through hell as these cops escaped a massive wildfire. Here are 15 unbelievable moments caught on police body cam. Lufkin, Texas is the largest city in Angelina County. It sits in eastern Texas, about 120 miles northeast of Houston and 170 miles southeast of Dallas. They're home to about 34,000 people and one incredibly bold shoplifter. Tasha Sponsler likes to steal. The 33-year-old woman from Pollock, Texas was already under arrest after robbing a cosmetics store. While handcuffed in the back of a squad car, Tasha decided to hatch one more robbery, stealing the police cruiser. She somehow managed to free her hands in the back seat. She then decided to see if the coast was clear. All the officers were too busy talking and pulling stolen eyeshadow out of her bag. She used the distraction to climb into the front seat and peel away. Yeah, about that. God dang! Hey! God. The chase was on. Normally, officers would be chasing a truck or a tricked out sports car. Now, they were chasing one of their own. Footage from inside the stolen cop car shows the moment Tasha's joyride came to an end. She's lucky the car spun out instead of flipping over. Officers surrounded the vehicle and punched out the window. Tasha was okay. She was just upset that her joyride had ended so abruptly. You can't hear it, but she allegedly made a sarcastic comment when officers asked if she was hurt. In the end, Tasha paid dearly for her decision. She was sentenced to 45 years in prison based on her prior convictions. It was the last joyride she'll ever take. Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin is the largest city on the Door Peninsula, the thin strip of land jutting up from Green Bay into Lake Michigan. It's home to about 9,000 people and a small herd of cows that owe the local police department their lives. It was June 25th of 2023. Officer Andrew Crabb was on his way home after an overnight shift when he saw thick black smoke rising above the barn. He could have sworn he heard panicked mooing in the distance. By the sound of it, some innocent cows were in trouble. The cows trapped behind the fence escaped thanks to Andrew's heroic actions. If the fire didn't get them, the smoke inhalation would have. Looking back, it almost seems like the first cow showed Officer Crab where to open the gate. It runs to the chain, taps it, and then moves away. Andrew would have figured it out eventually, but every precious second counts in these situations. Thankfully, no humans or cows were harmed during the fire. Firefighters arrived moments later and were able to save most of the barn. Portage, Indiana is a small city on the banks of Lake Michigan. It's about a 40-mile ride northwest to Chicago and two and a half hours south to Indy. Portage usually avoids the headlines, but news crews flocked there in January of 2024 to cover a survival story unlike any you have ever heard. It was Wednesday, December 20th. Matt Ream had just lost an old friend. The funeral was in Missouri, but prior commitments kept him in Portage that night. The plan was to drive south on Thursday to be there on Friday morning. It had been a long and emotional day. Matt was tired and his mind was racing. He missed his exit on his way home and wound up heading north toward Chicago. Then, out of nowhere, a deer appeared on the road. 
Matt swerved and crashed through the highway barrier. He rolled his truck, skipped across a creek, and landed hard under the highway overpass. And there he sat for six days until somebody finally found him. Is he from Zero? Words. When I have males conscious breathing. That is Mario Garcia, a local fisherman who was looking for a spot along the creek. He and his son-in-law noticed Matt's truck and assumed the worst. When they walked over to inspect the wreck, Matt twitched and opened his eyes. Mario jumped out of his skin and called the police. Matt was alive, but in rough shape. He was severely dehydrated and hadn't eaten anything in six days. He told police he had survived on rainwater. He even apologized for going to the bathroom inside his truck. The wreck pinned Matt's left leg, and he'd lost feeling below the knee. He'd broken both his right hand and his right ankle. He couldn't have gotten out of the truck no matter how hard he tried. All he could do was sit and scream, but the overhead traffic drowned him out. As officers waited for firefighters to arrive, one filled our body cam officer in on how long Matt had been trapped there. He also offered some theories on how it could have happened. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, how long has he been there? They said six or seven days. Oh my god. Yeah. But I mean, nobody would have seen this thing no. rolling. He roll off the side or what? He must have hit it. Like, I don't know if it, is that a wheel? Maybe. Yeah, that's the. Yeah. But I mean, it's not weird to see a wheel on the side of 94. Yeah. Firefighters arrived and hooked Matt up to an IV bag he desperately needed. Officers cut the airbag away from his car while others used the jaws of life to cut the truck apart. The rescue lasted into the night. Thankfully, it was the last one Matt had to spend in his truck. Hey, you got two nurses en route to you from the helicopter. What? Two nurses from the helicopter en route. Okay. Hey, Zach, PD's bringing out the helicopter crew. Uh, I think fire stopped. We're stuck there. Who are we bringing them up? One of your guys, one okay. of your units. Andy! Just on Andy. Oh, I'm already in it. Right. Matt made it to the hospital, where doctors were able to save his life. Sadly, they weren't able to save his left leg. Still, Matt maintains a positive outlook on life. He plans to write a book about his experience and become a motivational speaker. One day, he hopes to return to his love of running. For now, he's grateful for the two men who found him. There's no telling how much longer he would have survived. August 18th, 2023, 4 p.m. The Spokane County Sheriff's Department responded to calls about a wildfire in northern Spokane, Washington. The wind was howling, and the fire was moving faster than expected. Many of the locals would have perished before they knew what was happening. Thankfully, Deputy Britton Morgan wasn't going to let that happen. He raced toward the fire and began ushering people away. Some went in a hurry. Others refused to leave caring more for their animals than their own safety. Deputy Morgan didn't know it, but his body cam was rolling the whole time. It documented his harrowing escape through what could only be described as hell on earth. Sir. Do you have a ride at least? That black car? All right. Adam Texan, I have one mail. The address 13 was just that. He's refusing to leave. Thank you. The farmer couldn't stand the thought of leaving his horses behind. Deputy Morgan would have dragged him away if he could, but there was nothing he could legally do. Morgan began warning other officers that the fire was headed their way. The escape window was shrinking quickly. Luckily, a different officer, Deputy Knave, had managed to warn another homeowner about the blaze. 
The man hopped in his truck and barreled down the road with Deputy Knave close behind. Morgan let both men pass before pulling out and joining the line. Had he waited any longer, he may not have made it. Madam 515, status. Holy God. Uh, the fire just jumped the road at 13717. The president there is going gold. 13717 on that road. Man. You're not getting me today, man. Eat my fat head fire. Hurry the name. I don't want to die in this. Go ahead. One adult male, one adult female sheltering in place. What was the address of Tina's child? Hurry up, Dave! Was it wasn't answering her phone. I believe it was. Holy f that was f hairy. Remember, Deputy Morgan didn't know his camera was on. Those lines weren't rehearsed or scripted. That was a pure adrenaline-fueled pep talk he gave himself in the car. He was getting out of there alive, and nothing, not even fire, would stop him. The story came full circle once Morgan escaped the blaze. The horse farmer from the beginning arrived in his black car. He must have been behind them the whole time. You can hear the raw emotion in Morgan's voice. He is elated that the man is okay. That is six nine five copy. We're working that. Oh, thank you, bro. I was so worried about you. Are you okay? I know you're probably t I sad for your horses right now, bro. I'm glad you're alive. Okay. Sadly, one person lost their life in the fire that day. By August 30th, it had burned nearly 11,000 acres and destroyed an estimated 120 homes. But the total damage would have been much worse if not for Morgan and Knave's bravery. Volusia County, Florida encompasses all the cities and towns around Daytona Beach. It's home to over 500,000 people living between several coastal towns, Coronado Beach, New Smyrna Beach, and of course, Daytona Beach. This wild police story takes place in Ormond Beach. It was June 5th of 2022. The Volusia County Sheriff's Department received a call about a stolen jet ski on the Halifax River. For context, the Halifax runs parallel to the Atlantic Ocean, forming a long barrier island in East Ormond Beach. Our thief was two miles downriver. If he reached the ocean, he'd be gone for good. Luckily, some locals were happy to lend them their boat. You, you can, I know you got lots of boating experience. Hey! Right here! Sheriff's office! Sheriff's office! Don't you up! Put your hands up! Come over here! Come over here! What? Swim! Yep, you heard that right. This moron decided to steal a jet ski even though he couldn't swim. Luckily, the police found some rope on board. I'm, do you have any weapons on you? Any weapons, guns, knives, anything. 38-year-old Ronald Williams was taken into custody for trespassing and grand theft. Jim Hagen and his sons had just gotten the boat on the water when police arrived. The officers asked Jim to drive them out into the lake, at which point he suggested they take the boat themselves. After all, this jet ski thief could be dangerous. He and his boy waited 45 minutes for the cops to return. They couldn't believe their eyes as the suspect was hauled away in handcuffs. It's unclear if Ronald ever learned how to swim. 
On July 29th of 2023, police officers in Cleveland, Ohio had just pulled over a silver Infinity near East 116th and Kinsman Street. The driver and passenger exited the vehicle and began walking away as police approached. We're guessing they had something to hide because this young kid wasn't about to stick around. Hands out your pocket. Hands out your pocket. Go like this. Got anything on you, man? No. Stop running. He's running towards 114 in regalia. White t-shirt, red shorts. Unfortunately, the suspect was much faster than our body cam officer. Lucky for him, his partner had been working on his cardio. That's him running by, hot on the suspect's heels. Let's pick up the chase from his perspective. Our officer didn't know that the Silver Infinity driver had returned to his car and was heading to scoop his buddy. And just like that, the suspect got away. Thankfully, our officer let go before being dragged any further. He was okay, just winded from a quarter-mile sprint around the block. According to the official report, the officer refused medical attention. He was probably more upset that the suspect got away. Evansville is a small city in Vanderburg County, Indiana. It sits just north of the Ohio River, right along the Indiana-Kentucky border. It's home to about 118,000 people and a woman who had a bone to pick with a local SWAT team. In June of 2012, Evansville police executed a search warrant at the home of 68-year-old Louise Milan. They traced threatening messages against the police department and Chief Billy Bolin to the IP address connected to Louise's house. Somebody inside wanted to harm police officers and their families. Louise didn't think the flashbang grenades were necessary. I'll get the screen door. Okay. You guys won't have to worry about the screen door. I'll get it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go Go We're here. I got high. I got high. Front door's open. I'll get it. I got it, Jeff. I'm gonna go to the left side. Police department search warrant! Police department search warrant! Put your hands on top of your head. I got it. We need one in the back. Need one. Need one in here. Need one back here, guys. SWAT proceeded to clear the house without finding anybody else. As the story goes, a man named Derek Murray made those online threats against the department. He was never inside Louise's home. He was just connected to her Wi-Fi via his cell phone. It's unclear if he and Louise knew each other. Evansville and Louise agreed to settle her lawsuit for $60,000. The SWAT didn't admit guilt, fault, or wrongdoing in what some called a botched raid. Meanwhile, Louise got a new glass door, plus whatever was left over. Hearst, Texas is a small city of about 40,000 people between Fort Worth and Dallas. On April 7th of 2018, police officers responded to a call about a car parked in somebody's living room. A driver had lost control, veered off the road, and slammed through the wall. But that wasn't the only thing they broke. When the driver crashed, they severed the natural gas line leading into the house. 
the scene became a ticking time bomb that went off as soon as police arrived. 433. Right here. Go past it, because you're gonna fire gonna have to get here. Go over here. Okay, that's good. Shit! Two twenty two you copy that way explosion in the house. Are you all right? Get up. Let's see that again from another officer's perspective. Reports claim the explosion happened at 400 Myrtle Drive, but that was incorrect. It actually happened at 433 Myrtle. You can tell by the before and after photos on Google Maps. Three people were inside the house when it went up in flames. Thankfully, officers rescued everyone and brought them to the hospital. The driver, 35-year-old Alejandro, was arrested for driving without a license. He was later turned over to U.S. Customs on an immigration-related matter. The home, which had been in the family for decades, was rebuilt even stronger than before. It's unclear if they still rely on natural gas. Wausau is a small city in northern Wisconsin. It's home to about 40,000 people and a landlord who thought someone was breaking into one of his empty apartments. On August 5th of 2022, he received a call about a broken window at the City Walks apartment building. It was on the second floor, which was strange for a break-in, but not impossible. He called maintenance to investigate. Luckily, there were no robbers inside. But what they did find wasn't necessarily safe. A wild turkey had crashed through the window and was running amok in the apartment. Officers from the Wausau Police Department came with protective arm sleeves and nets to catch the bird. Sure, it's not a tiger, but a turkey's talons can still do some damage. Officers arrived at the apartment and prepared to breach. It's unclear if bird B and E was part of basic training. I see it. How big is it? Uh, it's. I think oh. it's doable. Oh yeah. It's walking around. It's not a tom, so that's good. Oh god. All right. Uh, should we just go in at it? What, what are you hiding over there for? You're, you got the gloves and the net. Come on, just go. All right. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's getting... This turkey rescue wasn't going to be as easy as they thought. Eventually, they trapped the bird in a small room, which made catching it a little easier. Got in one room. Okay, keep it in that room. We need another <laughs> nap. Because I'm useless. <laughs> oh my god. Got him. Hey! Well done. All right, now I just don't know what to do. How, how far down? I mean, we're on the second floor. It's probably it's probably not mega suitable to just. Uh, no, I, I got him. Hold on, Here, Brady. Hold on, hold on to this. All right, let's go outside. Okay. Okay. Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! We got her. Thankfully, they decided not to throw the bird out the window. Just because it has wings doesn't mean it would fly. In the end, our officers released the bird outside, and it ran away into the trees. Now, you might be asking why they didn't call animal control. Well, Wausau is a tiny city. According to the patrol captain, they only have one specialist to handle these situations. When they get wild animal calls, it usually falls on their patrol officers to deal with it. Cats are natural climbers, but sometimes they get stuck in places where they can't get down. Where do you think the famous line, help, my cat is stuck in a tree, comes from? On February 1st of 2019, police in Lufkin, Texas, responded to a call about a cute little kitty cat stuck in the branches over the road. Officers Trotty and Stallard arrived to find the cat stuck about 30 feet off the ground. Luckily, one of them had a blanket and a good idea. Hey, we'd catch that sucker. Yeah, but you got your job, babe. Well, we can, trust me, I can get that cat down. Hold this blanket. <clears throat> Hold it out wide. Now you let that cat fall, that's your fault. 
Alright. Hang on, come my way a little bit. Trotty and Stallard got themselves in position under the tree. Now came the difficult task of convincing the cat to fall. Since communication wasn't an option, Trotty resorted to shaking the tree and hoping for the best. Come on down, cat. I'll wait a little bit. Come on, cat. <laughs> Got it. Come on. What you know about that? And we got that cat. The cat was a stray that somebody had seen stuck in the tree. Since nobody claimed it, they named it Trotty after the officer who saved its life. They brought it to a local animal shelter and put Trotty up for adoption. Illyria, Ohio is a small city in Lorain County. It's home to roughly 52,000 people living 30 minutes west of Cleveland. Unfortunately, illegal drugs have become a problem in Illyria in recent years. According to the Public Health Department, there were unusually high rates in 2023. It was May 6th of 2023. Illyria officers were tracking a wanted man named Brandon Sherrill when they observed him run into a home on Kenyon Avenue. He and his buddies didn't have much time to hide as officers entered the house. Let's just say they chose all the wrong places. Oh my God. The man in the dryer is Michael McCloskey. Compared to the other officers, Michael has to be at least six feet tall, if not taller. He would have made a great contortionist if he didn't get involved with crime. He also wasn't the only person hiding in strange places. Who are you, man? Whoever you is, get down here. Whoever you is. Okay. Can you get up there or no? Yeah. All right. You gotta give me a boost. Yeah, I got it. Who else is up here? Is it normal to hide in the attic? The next suspect thought nobody would notice if he stayed quiet under the blankets. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Woo, 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 woo. Wake up. Can you stand back up for me, please? To his credit, Brandon had the best hiding spot. He tucked himself under the stairs and watched all of his friends get arrested. Thankfully, Illyria officers weren't that stupid. You really think we're that dumb? Get up! Stand up. No. Come out. The thought of prison weighed heavy on his mind. To calm his nerves, Brandon decided to light up a cigarette. We were surprised the officers let him smoke it. In total, police arrested seven suspects inside the house, including the homeowner, another man, and another young woman. All seven were charged with drug-related offenses. Let's just say the police found plenty of evidence inside the home. In an official statement, they said, The Illyria Police Department believes the arrest of these individuals has made the Eastern Heights neighborhood and the community a safer place. Now, instead of squeezing into the dryer, this little gang will be squeezing into a holding cell. Cobb County, Georgia is a cluster of towns directly northwest of Atlanta. It's home to about 766,000 people, plenty of whom live in apartment complexes around the county. Some are lucky enough to have pools, which are great for escaping the Georgia heat. On February 21st of 2024, officers in Kennesaw, a small city in Cobb County, were called to the Heritage Park townhomes complex. Someone had crashed through the fence around the swimming pool and was now stuck on the cover. Officers had to act fast before the cover broke and her car sank to the bottom. Is he conscious? Yeah, he lifts his head up every once in a while. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and uh, set it out there for me. Cool. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, come on.
Come on. It's cold in here, okay? Hey, We're gonna get up. Sir. Come on. Come on. Let's go. You're gonna come with me, okay? Come on. Out of your pool. Got it. The woman was unresponsive, likely suffering from a medical condition mixed with hypothermia. Police began covering her with towels and blankets to try and warm her legs. Fire and rescue arrived moments later and brought her to the hospital, where she made a full recovery. It's unclear what caused her to crash through the fence and pass out. It may have been something alcohol-related, or she could have suffered a medical emergency behind the wheel. Ultimately, she's lucky the pool cover held up under her car. Had it broken, officers would have never been able to save her. Pierce County, Washington is a cluster of cities and towns south of Seattle. It's home to about 900,000 people, making it the second most populated county in the state. All of those people share a backyard with plenty of big game animals like black bears, cougars, and elk. On September 1st of 2023, the Pierce County Sheriff's Department got a call about a scared wild animal. A male elk had gotten its antlers caught in a tree swing. The Sheriff's Department would typically wait for animal control to tranquilize the elk and cut it free. However, a delay left our two deputies to rescue the animal on their own. Easy boy. Easy, buddy. Easy. It's okay. Our deputy tried to cut the rope, but the elk wouldn't let him get close enough. Remember, this is a panicked animal. One wrong move, and those antlers could cause serious harm. Luckily, the other deputy came back with some helpful tools. Those branch trimmers should do the trick. Get you out, there's one. That's working? It's slowly working, Chad. Um, if I could just get the one more. I'm trying to keep them between me and the tree. All he had to do was cut one more rope, but the elk kept moving further away from the tree. As soon as the officer came out from behind cover, it charged. Right you, I know. Easy. Good. Let's see that again from the other officer's perspective. You all right? You all right? Thankfully, he was okay. Now it was the other officer's turn to see if he could cut the elk free. <sighs> Witnesses saw the elk again a few days later. This time, he was getting a snack out of a feeding station. They knew it was him based on the ropes tied around his antlers. But don't worry, he shed those antlers and grew new ones over the winter. If you're walking around Pierce County and find some antlers covered in rope, you'll know exactly where they came from. These deputies might appreciate them as a souvenir. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.